When I was a young teenager, my parents divorced. I felt deeply abandoned and really wanted to feel accepted and lovable, good enough. I looked in all the wrong places for that kind of acceptance. I ended up, you know, getting involved with a boy who probably thought what he was doing was normal. Probably thought that, hey, when you party and you really love someone, sometimes you punch things or sometimes you push them because you love them so much and sometimes you hurt them. He had me believing it was real, that it was my fault. You know, if I got treated physically in any way, you know, violently, I deserved it. I went through a lot and felt completely worthless, like I wasn't good enough to have better. I got to a darker and darker place. I wanted to belong to someone that didn't want to leave, didn't want to leave me, that wouldn't leave me. And well, he left, <laughs> he left. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me. It took a long time for me to really understand that I deserved better. I remember telling my friends after we broke up, like, we have to celebrate, really trying to just pretend I wasn't falling apart in pain. So we were going to go party. And I remember putting the glass to my mouth, ready to drink, and I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I, I, I was deeply broken. And alcohol hadn't helped all along. It wasn't going to help this time. But what I had been ignoring for years is my savior. And I remember thinking that there's no way I'm going to take this step out of this massive dark black hole unless I really change my life and I take the savior's hand. That being said, I hadn't dealt with all of my emotional trauma, really at this point in time, wanted to hurt myself. I wanted to starve myself. I remember self-harming. That whole day, I remember trying to hide my scars. I remember that he has already suffered so much, and he suffered for me. And so, you know, I look at my scars now and my emotional scars, which I, you know, it's a, a lifetime journey of working. And, you know, emotions boil up in a you know, sometimes it, it comes flooding back, and so you have to kind of rework on things to consistently address, you know, in your heart, whether it's in through prayer and or therapy or, you know, speaking to a loved one about the hard things that you've been through. And that's not to say that you won't still hurt or you won't still have pains or you won't still have things to go through. But I got to tell you that having them with the Savior by your side, you know, even when you feel so lonely and you feel like you're walking alone, like he is there holding your hand. And that is the most amazing thing in the world. Because in spite of how dark this world is and how much you can't prevent your loved ones from going through things, there's always the Savior. And he's always there to pick up the pieces.